Uh, All right, y'all, man. I'm back, man. T Rail, man. I'm here with uh, my homie Drebo, man. I told y'all I was gonna like, well, everybody. I was gonna start highlighting people, you know, you know, and bringing up. <laughs> up i felt like it's important bringing people up i felt like you know i needed to shine a light on that you know that you know put something else on their resume you feel me that i i just felt like you you needed that extra boost you know you've been doing a lot out here in a music game you feel me so you know i want everybody to you know introduce my drebo my boy you know yeah, what i'm saying man, appreciate <laughs> you for having me it's a blessing being up here man yeah on top of your Let's talk about look, <laughs> and then brought my name up two, three times. Hey, I got a politics for myself. You know what I mean? If yeah. I ain't lobbying for me, then who gonna do it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's fucking with you and shit. You feel me? So I had to just on the basis of of that too. You know, I had to go back. You know what I'm saying? See what's going on. I'm like, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you feel me? Is bringing up his name for a, a reason, but you know, and it's and a nigga hard. You feel me? Man, so appreciate it. Yes, sir. I with it man so you know what's up man? what you got going man i got a lot of shit in the works um coming off of 365 last year i dropped a song a day for the whole year uh so that's kind of like my big thing right now i'm working on an album i'm working on one uh produced by the census that's like my duo that uh produced shut the fuck up one of my biggest records and then uh, i'm also working on an album that i produce and engineer myself completely Man, you cold, man. Yeah, so. Before we start getting into depth of what you like doing right now, you know what I'm saying? We can start from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How Drebo, you know, grew up. Yeah, so, man, I'm from L.A. Uh, lived in mid-city L.A. for, like, the first eight years of my life and then moved to West L.A. I pretty much grew up an athlete, so I was I was playing football to, from, like, seven years old up and through college. So, like, that was that's who I was all throughout my regular life. Played at Baldwin Hills, you feel me? Uh, went to Venice High School. That's where I met the homie Tiny, you know what I mean? And we was, I was playing football, went to college, played football. And then in, in, in my junior year, that's when I, like, started dabbling with music. Now I just make, like, bullshit songs on the side with the little iPhone, earphone, and garage band. And I just liked it. So I just, like, kept following that interest. And I just kept doing it more and more and more and realized, like, damn, man, I really like this shit. And so I just kept doing what I like. It turned into a passion. And now we're here. So in college, you was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. You know what hey, I'm there saying? was a part. I ain't doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm gonna do the music. Yeah, for sure. But like, there was a point where I thought about like dropping out, and I talked to one of my brothers who actually did drop out, and then go back and get his degree. And like, you know, he gave me a lot of good perspective during that time. So I ended up still finishing college and getting my degree, and then pursuing music afterwards. What did you get your degree in? Uh, technical communication. Technical communication. Yeah. So it's like, like fucking, like <laughs> taking complicated verbiage and dumbing it down for like everyday use and shit like that oh it's some bullshit yeah a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but i ain't gonna lie though Nigga, what you, i ain't gonna lie i don't i don't do nothing in that field for real for real i know but you shit, don't nigga. that shit taught me a lot though because no like one of the biggest things about that degree is like being clear and concise in your messaging yeah. and so i end up making music so it's like that shit helped me in being able to like convey my message in my music you know what I mean? And get to the point and like really convey my shit and know what I'm saying and what I'm trying to say and execute it. Yeah. So uh, where was, how did mom and dad feel about that? Uh, I mean, my parents, they cool. Like, I mean, pops, he not tripping. He like, you know what I mean? Do your thing. Mom's, she not really tripping. She just like, whatever you do, man, go do it a hundred and be great at it. You know what I mean? It wasn't really about like, oh, you got a degree. So you got to go do X, Y, Z with your degree. It was like kind of like live your life. Oh damn, that's cool. I mean, I like supportive parents because most of these niggas that be rapping, parents be like, you know what, boy, you ain't finna, you know. What I'm, <laughs> I'm sure she probably felt that way at some <laughs> like, point. Nigga, God damn, this nigga want to be a rapper out of For all sure. this shit. You feel me? Yeah. What did moms? What what, what what profession is moms in? So moms used to work uh, in like bone marrow transplant, like at UCLA. She retired now though, but uh, now we all collectively run our family restaurant. Uh, we got a restaurant in Mid City called Natural Art Jamaican Restaurant. It's uh, right on the corner of Washington and Fit, and so we all just run that together right now. Damn! So y'all own a, a Jamaican restaurant. Yeah, a Jamaican restaurant. How's that doing? It's good. It's good. Um, we survived shit, recession, pandemic. Like so, I mean, we doing good. Like 
it was it was a little questionable at the beginning of the pandemic, but I know a lot of people who like either had to start GoFundMe's or close or stuff like that. Like we we actually did better during that time. A lot of people came and started supporting even more. So it was super dope to see that. And just, you know, we blessed to be able to keep going. I mean, in those pandemic days, people was like, Man, I lost money. I lost this. I lost sure. that. And I was like, I ain't lose no money. For you sure. know what I'm saying? It it was kinda like you know, it like made my hustle harder and people was like support more, you know, and you know, I got the online shit. So yeah. niggas was buying online shit, like, For you know, sure. so was y'all doing like the DoorDash and shit? Was niggas yeah, really so, fucking with it like that? Yeah. Yeah, so we got lucky because I moved back to L.A. I was living in San Francisco. I moved back to L.A. probably like five years ago or something like that. And when I came in, we had like our own delivery. We had a nigga who was just delivering. And then I came in and like implemented DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, Postmates, all that. So we kind of were a little bit ahead of it. And I did that maybe like 2017 or something like that. And so when the pandemic hit, a lot of people were trying to get that now. And it was like wait lists and you was on like hundred and something a wait list. So we kind of got lucky that we were already had that running. And then we was kind of like hustling, getting, I was getting like our names on different little lists. Cause this was right, right around the time when George Floyd passed and it was like a bunch of lists of just like black businesses to support in this, Y, and Z. So I was trying to make sure we get on every one of them lists and, you know, exposure kind of just helped us stay like thriving. Do you use some of that? Like you use most of that money, like to support your rap career? Nah, well, I mean, I get paid from it, yeah, but uh, yeah, basically, like all everything I get, I'm, I'm trying to reinvest into this shit because I believe I could go far. And you, and you know, reinvesting, you doing this shit yourself. You feel yeah, me? I'm a like, one man band. You producing yourself, you engineering yourself. Yeah, I got you know I, I got producers that I work with, but uh, I do a lot of my production myself as well. Yeah, what what have you done so far? You know what I'm saying for other niggas as far as producing or writing, like you know what I'm saying. What projects have you been on? Like I want to, I want the people to you know really know what's up with you. Um, yeah, so I, I just recently uh, was on Dame Dill- uh, Dame Dill- Damian Lillard. There you go. I was gonna call him Dame Dollar, but Dame <laughs> Dollar, Dame Lillard, whatever you want to call him. Um, his last project, uh, I was on a song called Home Team, where I did the hook. Um, a little bit earlier, I did a song with Larry June called Organic Pimping. Both of those are past a million right now. Um, you produced on that? Nah, I, I was on it. Oh, you was on it? Yeah. So oh, I'm you called? On it. Yeah. You called? I'm featured on it. And then I also did, I actually did a record with Traffic earlier um, in my career with uh, on the Alchemist and Budgies, the good book too. And that, that song ended up being the single on that project. And how did, how did that relationship with Dame Dollar come about? Uh, so I actually know his cousin. So when I was living in the Bay Area, um, when I gra- so basically I graduated high school and I moved to the Bay Area. Um, and when I was living in the Bay Area, this is fast forward, I come back, go to school, come back. I'm working at this company doing like delivering hospital beds and shit. I'm doing music on the side, but you know, I gotta eat. So I'm working, doing this hospital bed company. I happen to be working with two of his cousins and one mm-hmm. of them make music, we just chop it up. We ended up being cool. Uh, fast forward, I moved to LA like two years later, we always just kind of stayed connected. And so he called me one day, this was like 2019 or something like that. Uh, maybe early 2020, something like that. He called me like, Dame, looking for a singer on this song. Da da da. He sent me the record. Uh, I did the hook in like a day and then sent it right back and Dame was fucking with it. And then he ended up dropping it like a couple months later. And then full circle, it ended up being on the album the following year. That's hard, you know what I'm saying? I want to let everybody know, as far as being a rapper, nigga, you can have a job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You can go to work. There's nothing wrong with going to work. And you see what happened when this nigga went to work. Man. You know what I'm saying? Built a relationship, was on the song with Dame Dollar Boom, you know what I'm saying? And shit will grow like that. Relationships will grow just like that organically. Thanks. You feel me? Like, Thanks. mother, you, I, you gotta I, eat. Yeah, you gotta eat. You gotta do something because you just can't be out here. You feel nah, me? Like, and it, that. Ain't gonna, it ain't gonna just happen. Like, it ain't gonna happen overnight. It ain't going to happen like so you got to you got to build this brick by brick. You definitely got to build, you know, something that's stu- super intriguing. You know what I'm saying? Really why I got you in here that I really haven't seen nobody do is, you know, what I'm saying back to what you were saying. You drop the song every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this was of last year. Last year. Every day of 2021, this Man. nigga dropped a song like. You know, the distinct team in here, they say they be working, but they ain't did that <laughs> shit. You feel me? The nigga, if y'all niggas might want to watch this shit, y'all niggas, this nigga out working you niggas like, bro, like, how the hell you finding the motivation to drop a song every day? Man, it, it actually stemmed from a Nip and Gary V interview that I saw on YouTube. 
in 2017 and they were kind of in the studio and they were just talking about like the future of music and Gary Vee like one day is going to be a big time artist to drop a song every day and like never look back and that that idea was just intriguing to me and so I was like at that time I wanted to do it but I just like I never did it yeah. and then the pandemic hit and in the middle of the pandemic I'm like fuck this should have been the year that I was doing that no everybody in the house everybody on the phone da 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 so uh 2021 come around we like is the world gonna open up nobody really know so i was like fuck it i'm gonna do it this year and so january 1st was coming around i probably decided like the beginning of december and i was like i went hard in the beginning of december i'm just recording 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 and then january 1st come I'm like fuck it i'm just gone and i'm just every day song every day every day every day like was you writing or was you freestyling uh, a little bit of both so it's like it was it was like it was like waves so it'd be like at the beginning of the year i'm hot i'm fresh i'm ready to do it so i'm knocking knocking songs out i'm finishing the month before the month you know what i mean and then as the year goes on you know you got life catching up you got people passing and stuff like that it's just different things happen and I, it, like the motivation slow down sometimes it's low sometimes you got to force yourself to get in there and get a song sometimes you got it and so it just it was just depending on how i felt and that shit really just helped me hella as an artist just to be able to to like go and create like it feels easier now now that i've put myself through that like gauntlet yeah i mean shit <laughs> i would I, it's probably points i would have been like man fuck i gotta do this <laughs> <Right. with> the <laughs> beeps. <laughs> and, i know you had the points like man it's damn. sometimes when the song came out at 11 p.m i'm like i'm gonna get this bitch out before <laughs> midnight for sure but so, it's, it's rough but i'm like you know what i mean i made sure i got one out every single day out of the 365 how many you think is cold though Shit, honestly, at over eighty percent. Over eighty percent, you feel like the motherfuckers hey, are dangerous. It's they a go. Play, it's a playlist on Spotify, Drebo three sixty five. Tap in with it, you feel me? You could, you could be the judge. Ooh, nigga, that's crazy, Man. homie. And you put this shit on Spotify for niggas yeah, to go. It's like, all original music. I'm figuring like why niggas didn't pick this up. You feel me? I know your distro kid got a gang of bread in it. Yeah, it's cool. You feel me? It's, it's cool. <laughs> It's cool. right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just like, yeah, man, I, I think I think it's one of those things where it's like this is a prep. Like I think people gonna catch up to this as I continue to grow and continue to do more things and continue yeah. to drop more and more records and then they gonna go back like, Oh damn, this nigga did what? And then they gonna listen to it and be like, Oh shit, this nigga been going crazy. Yeah. You ever you have you ever got frustrated yet in this music shit to where you feel like, you know what, man, I, I don't know where I'm going, I feel stagnant. And you know this shit just ain't working for me yeah for sure i feel like that sometimes you know what i mean and i think that's just what comes with the territory i just always remind myself that like a lot of even just like the story i just told you about dame lillard like a lot of the shit that happened it's just like it gotta be god because it's like what's the odds of i meeting that nigga and then him choosing me to reach out to or and then me being prepared for that opportunity to do that record the way i did it you know what I mean? So it's like a lot of the things that happened to propel my career or just been milestones in my career growing has been like, for me, God moments. And I'm like, this shit for a reason. I just got to keep going and do my part. How far has this music shit took you? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you've been in a few rooms with motherfuckers, but yeah. yeah. What's your biggest moments in this shit? Man, my biggest moments. Ooh. I think doing those, few, uh, those two shows on Q's Crash Tour, that's probably some of my biggest moments, partly because, you know what I mean, I know Q and like watching his trajectory and who he is and just being able to get on the same stage that I watched him killed right after. Like that, that was a big moment for me. So shout out to the homie TF and Q for sure. I mean, if y'all don't know, he talking about Schoolboy Q. So how did you meet Schoolboy? Uh, so I met Q through the homie Tiny a uh, long time ago. I mean, I know the homie since we was 14. And just kind of like knowing him over time, just being over there every now and then. All right, a school, because you play football, like you said, you play yeah. football. Yeah, so because they play football before y'all, right? They play, they play that. Did they play at Santa Monica so, or Venice? So Floyd Venice. played with my brother at Venice. At Venice, and yeah. Then basically, okay. so how I meet Tiny Floyd, like, hey, Tiny, after practice, go find a nigga named Naeem and go to his house. And I'm like, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like so I'm like, all right, for sure. So basically, after practice, they come up to me like, hey, you know you? Uh, I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm supposed to go to your house. Floyd said, I'm supposed to go. But I had already knew Floyd because my brother, he would be at my house all the time. So I'm like, all right, for sure. And then, you know, niggas been homies ever since because we got a lot of values that align. 
Yeah, so being on that tour, who took you on that tour? TF? Yeah, TF brought me on that. Shout out my boy man, TF, out to man. TF real man, man. How was sure. getting that call? Like, you know what, nigga, let's go on tour. Because, you know, us, you, we from the 50s, and, you know, a lot of us, not a lot of us, but a few of us is kind of famous, you know, and some of us, you know, still kind of living a regular life. And we were just talking about this with Tiny. We, we, might, we might wake up to a wild-ass call or a text yeah, like, sure. hey, my nigga, uh, shit, you ready to go to Scotland? <laughs> nigga, yeah. like what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so TF hit you like, hey, you want to go on tour with schoolboys? Like, yeah, nigga. I'm like, hell yeah, nigga, what the <laughs> fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I have been to like so many shows. Like, I went to the championship tour. I went to like a bunch of blank face shows, and like I've been around. So it's like to have the opportunity to bust the stage was like no brainer, nigga. Whatever I got to do to be there, I'm there, nigga. Yeah, oh God in heaven, like shit. You say how many shows you did? Nah, we did two. We two, did two, two on the couch. We did uh, Oakland at the Fox Theater, and then we did the Wamu Theater in Seattle. Damn. Was yeah. they fucking with you? Yeah, it was lit. For sure, for sure. I did the whole nigga, hands up, nigga. <laughs> I'm call me, nigga. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a performer. You know what I mean? Like, I really do this, too. So it's like I'm prepared for any opportunity I get. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I like I like my my niggas that come up here. You feel me? And you know that really ain't got no like a gang ties. I wouldn't say gang ties, but they not from a gang. And I always ask them, you know, and I I kind of appreciate it a little bit because I, I you know I kind of feel like sometimes I wish I wouldn't have did that shit so I can you know maneuver my way through more shit without the politics. You yeah. know, it's like. How did you, you know what I'm saying, do that? You know what I'm saying, for yourself? Like, how did you, like, you know, maneuver away from that shit and, and not get caught up? I think just being myself. Like, I've always been somebody who kind of, like, I'm going to do my thing. And so it's like, if it, I just, I've just always been myself, been a solid individual, been stand up, never on no, like, weird shit or just, like, playing the fence or nothing. It was just like, yeah, this is me. And it's like, the people that... I connected with, you know what I mean, from the 50s, they not on no like, well, you over here, nigga, get put on. They just like, they accepted me for who, was I, who, I, who I am, and they, they fuck with me. And so I was uh, able to just continue to be who I am and be solid. Yeah, I mean, because that's just how the 50s. If it was across the tracks, it'd been another story. <laughs> huh? We just cool over there, you know. It's just cool. It's a family environment. You know? It's family oriented. Like, I really fuck with it, too. Like, man, that's why you fall into certain shit. Then when you get older, it's like, oh, hold on. It's another little story. You feel me? But, yeah. you know, for the 50s, it was, you know, it was crazy. And being in the 50s, my, you know, musical, like, like influences are, like, you know, it start get crazy you know what i'm saying we mm -hmm. was over there partying you know what i'm saying house parties niggas coming up and down the street niggas was listening to a lot of different music you know fucking around over there like what like what's their like uh music influences growing up man i'm kind of like a little over the place I, i've because like i grew up fucking with what, what my mom listened to so it's like sundays cleaning the house type shit she'll go from tupac to bob marley to fucking uh, anita baker you know what I mean? So I'm 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 really heavy on R and B. That's one of my big influences. Um, like Lupe Fiasco is my favorite rapper. You feel me? So I got like a I got like a wide range of shit. But as far as like influence in my music, like Q definitely. Um, I think he he uh, influenced me in the way that I approach this shit. You know what I mean? Elaborate. Just like like this like this nigga like it's the next level when you see him work. Mature. You know what I mean? It's mature. It's like, nigga, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it, people probably think he just have fun all the time, but it's like, that nigga, when it's time to lock in, he locked in. Like, the amount of records he record for his projects and shit and how he's, like, meticulous on the way he do shit is, is inspiring. So I, I take heed to that shit when I'm around it. And just, like, uh, Nate Dogg's a huge influence on me. You know, that's where I get a lot of my melodies and singing stuff from. Um, yeah, like, reggae, R&B, reggae, rap. That's my three. Who you listening to right now, though, while you moving around? Oh, man. Honestly, I be listening to instrumentals. So, like, I be listening to, like, the Mike and Keys album, Midnight Mirage. Because uh, I be, I mean, I'm a one-man band, so I'm working. So, yeah. like, a lot of times I just, I don't really want words. And then aside from that, I be listening to myself. I think there's a lot of dope people doing shit. You know, I listen to the homies like Bell, TF, you know what I mean, Traffic and shit like that. Um, but I think the city's in a good place for sure, for sure. It's but that's real rap too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They really rapping. Is you know like 
TF Bell. Like these niggas really come with bars. Sure, you know what sure. I'm saying? Like yeah. then you got your niggas that's kind of ratchet. Then you got your niggas that's kind of singing and doing your shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I know I, I'm trying to figure out like how hard is it for you to be producing a record, then rap on it? Like I always trying to figure out like how hard that shit was. Like that's crazy. Like you you a low key genius. I ain't Man, gonna lie I to you. Appreciate it. I mean it's hard for sure, but for me it's easy because like. I, don't, I I pride myself in being versatile, so like I don't buy myself to no box. I'm like, yeah. so when I'm creating, man, I might create some shit that sound right, shit that sound left. But like when I'm creating it, if I'm producing the beat, like I hear where I want to go right away, and so it's like it's easy for me to come up with a hook or a melody or or a verse or whatever. And so it's like, yeah, like that. It kind of makes it a little hard for me to kind of fit in and today's LA sound because it's like I ain't talking about street shit but I ain't talking about ratchet shit I'm talking I'm talking to like mature niggas who's like on some type of journey you know what I mean and so it's like I think it'll all come full circle when it's supposed to it's all about timing do you feel like you know versatility is kind of a part of why LA is kind of still like stuck in that box and motherfuckers not really fucking with us outside our region uh I don't think that's a reason I just think like uh it's timing you know what I mean? Because I feel like L.A. is in a good place musically. And I feel like we're right getting to that point where we can possibly take the torch back if, like, everybody who's hot right now just continue going crazy. Like who? Just like the the Kendricks, the Blast, the Tyler, the Creators, the YG, the Kalins, the Jason Cash, the Bells, the TFs, like, the G Pericos, like, everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, it is. I, I don't know, but for some reason, it, it just feel like it's always a politic with us, or as you know, the the other you know states or West Coast or South don't kind of like pick up on us like 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 that right now. You feel me? Like yeah. we can't really get out get out of there like that. But I feel like Roddy Rich is in there though. Roddy I, he, Rich I fuck, for sure. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? He got I out of there. I just wasn't gonna name fifty people. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop somewhere. Yeah, I mean, them niggas be getting it's, up in there. It's, it. it's a lot of niggas. Like they, I think LA is in a good place. I really do. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think they are in a good place too, man. Sometimes I be feeling like, but then it be like the politics are always trying to hold a nigga back. This the mm. game politics always like it's somewhere in there. You feel me? Like yeah. to where you can't do shit and it uh and it kind of hold us back. You feel me? As far as that shit, but I'm yeah, it's, I, oh yeah, for the Kendrick album, you fuck with that? Yeah, that shit hard. I got been saying like uh, you was here the other day. I'm saying I'm niggas didn't want to. I'm like I've been hearing a lot of Kendrick slander, that nigga, and hard. I don't want to hear that shit. You feel me? Like nah, hell no. That Man, shit is hard. That shit is hard as fuck. Yeah. Just like I, I, you know, what I mean, I like the way he he puts his shit out. You know, what I mean, like the art in his shit, the the mm -hmm. underlying shit that you probably don't know, but you create your own conclusion of. And then he also finds a way to make like music in the midst of the message. Yeah. And that's kind of what I try to do in my shit, too. It's like, I want to be talking about some shit, but I want you to be able to slap that shit, too. Oh, God. And I like the, you like the family aspect of it. I don't yeah. like the, you to share shit, you feel me, and your sure. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got, a, you, you, you got a family thing going on. Did you get married at a young age? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess 27 young, I guess. But you still married? Yeah, I'm married right now. Oh, you cold, yeah, bro. Sure. I don't give a fuck, man. I be doing my thing. You <laughs> cold nigga, man. How your wife helping you out with your music career, man? Man, she she was like she she uh she shooting me with me in the gym. You know what I mean? Like she helped me any way I need. You know what I mean? And she like she was with me in the beginning, and she with me now, and she still believe in the vision the same way I do. Oh, did she was helping you, man? She was helping. Yeah, managing I mean, you. I've been with her for a long time. So she does she still help you manage right now? Yeah, for sure. She like, you know what I mean? Like certain shit, because like she in her own world, uh, mm -hmm. she she's successful in her own right. And um, you know what I mean? She's like my resource. I bounce ideas off her. If I need some shit ran or hey, I need a, a I need a lawyer for such for this contract, for this place or whatever, like, you know what I mean? She she hold me down. Oh, that's cool, man. I, I like that, man. I and I I like hearing that. I mean, but you know, me personally, my wife got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not managing nothing with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can get your ass up out of here. Yeah, like. 
<laughs> no, your wife is over when she managed you already. You know. <laughs> you not managing all we dream on no more, man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. She be in the emails, man, trying to see. Now nah, she you know? got her own shop to homies email. You feel me? So, <laughs> that's yeah. right. You know? I be like, hey, you want to send me? Send it to her. And then she sends through them to tell me the good ones. Any of your homies you got around you right now telling you whether or not your shit is hot or not? I'm like, I, I know you can't be having no yes bed around you. Oh, no. Nah, for sure. Niggas gonna give you the real, for sure. Your wife be giving you the real, too? Yeah, for sure. Like, nigga, that she shit be, whack. Sometimes. Well, not, like, she be like, she ain't gonna say it like that, because that's not in her, but she yeah. be like, I don't like that one. Like, uh, uh, I don't like, <laughs> she like trying to lay you down nicely. I'm like, nah, you tripping, this shit hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I'm the artist, so I think everything I make hard, but, you know, sometimes you double back with fresh ears and you realize, like, oh, yeah, that one probably wasn't it. Where you see yourself in this music or in this in this music game? Man, I'm trying to be I see myself as being, you know what I mean, one of the legends out of LA. You know what I mean? One of the dudes who make a name for themselves, who not only put on for the city, but help, you know what I mean, bring niggas up. Do shit like what you doing, you know what I mean? Share my platform with other people and, and kind of give them opportunities as I get them. Yeah, I like that, man. And I hope you do become a legend, you feel me? Because I'm like, nigga, I had the interview. I ain't going to say I had. Well, fuck it. I got the first interview because the you other sure, one, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, hell no. I'm like, this nigga. Nah, shout out to the other ones too, though, you feel me? <laughs> no, they was, they was cool. <laughs> they was, you know what I'm saying? But nah, but, you, I mean, you're the biggest platform so far, for sure. And like, you know what I mean? You you reaching back, and you know what I mean? And so to give you your flowers, man, I, I definitely appreciate what you're doing. I fucks with what you're doing. Like, I was telling you when uh, I was up here for Bell shit, like, I don't even think you realize how big what you doing is, and that shit is huge, bro. I mean, no, you just sitting here. I I've been doing a lot of shit for a very long time, though. Just not this shit. You not feel for me? Sure. So, I I don't, I kind of don't be looking at that shit like, man, like damn, I don't realize what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's big, bro. Yeah. Sometimes I be looking at a couple comments. I'm like, damn, that shit cold. <laughs> but then I look back, I'm like, I just gotta keep going because I don't want to dwell in the, you know, yeah. in the bullshit, and I don't want to get, you know, get hyped up. And I, I'm just trying to stay organic with Man. this shit. You feel me? For sure. and I was telling niggas the other day, I don't even. I'm glad I never even looked up to niggas. Like I ain't even watch podcasts, nigga, or I Man. wasn't on no on YouTube and doing none of that bullshit, nigga, until I got here. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. And then it's just like now I'm like I'm cool. Like I'm just being myself, you know. And I'm just. I want to talk to my homies and niggas I know, you know, yeah, and you know, like y'all, I want to fuck with y'all and you know, do that shit, like. Nah, that but shit, yeah, that bro. shit is tight because it's also like you ain't going in and try to be something you saw. You just came in doing your thing, and it's like take it or leave it, and that's kind of like my pro my approach to the music too. Like I understand everybody ain't gonna like everything, or everything ain't for everybody. It's gonna be niggas that be like, ah, oh, that nigga weak, yeah. but then it's gonna be niggas who really see what I'm doing and like, oh yeah, this nigga cold. Yeah, you you ever uh, DM niggas asking for a verse and niggas ain't hit you back yet? Uh, nah, not really. I don't think so. Cause this music Cause game cold. I I'm probably like DM niggas, niggas trying to like, yo, what's up? I want to work type shit. But then I realized like that shit don't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you hear stories about how niggas be like, yeah, I was sending a five hundred emails a day or whatever. Like that shit don't work like that. Are you but see a nigga in the street like, what's the deal? Let me you know, sir, let's connect. You know, let me text a nigga. Boom, yeah. boom. Like, I'm gonna give you the bird. I'm gonna do that. Then nigga stop hitting you like, yeah, all right. Oh, I, yeah, I probably probably been through that a little bit but I, I just look at it as like man it's all it's all gonna come full circle because i know where i'm going and i know where I'm, I'm gonna take this that's cold man that's cold like when did you start thinking about you know what i'm really gonna be the best at this shit man probably i mean early on i knew i had something because i was just like you know what I mean? Like, basically, the first song I made, that shit was, well, not the first song, but, oh, yeah, it was the first song. The first song I made was called I'm Already Knowing. I was in college and shit, and then that shit was weak. But at the time, it was like I made it, and then one of my teammates shot a video for it, and then I'm walking around campus, and everybody like, hey, Drebo, I'm already knowing it on some shit. And I'm like, all right, I might be on this up. So I keep going, and then I'd probably say, like, when I moved back in 2017, like, the day I moved back, Tiny hit me like, hey, uh, I'm about to go to the studio session. You trying to go? I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, this type of shit I moved back for. Shit ended up being at the Alchemist house. And it's like Action Bronson, Earl Swesher, Q, all these niggas in there and shit. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? This is tight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somehow, some way, they was working on something. They end up in some other room. And it ended up being me, Traffic, and Budgie 
in the studio. And so we all just chopping it up. You know what I mean? Budgie play some music, Traffic play some music, I play some music, we all fuck with each other's shit. And he like, hey, I'm working on this project with Alchemist called The Good Book, da da da. And then we end up recording the song, which ended up being the single. And I'm like, shit, nigga. Yeah. You feel me? That, that's just off, just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, I'm on to something. You ever hit you, hit you about a verse or anything yet? Nah, I'm trying to get one. <laughs> That nigga scandalous. <laughs> nah, I feel like Q, uh, we try to throw a lime yeah, in there. Up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that nigga grind me up. I like your boy. Nah, that he nigga, be like, it's over with. Nah. Q do, Q like, you know what I mean? He do bigger shit than, than a verse. Like, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. just the access alone has given me more than, you know what I mean, a verse. Just being in rooms, hearing conversations, talking to him and shit like that shit means more to me than a verse. So I'm not even really tripping off a verse and I know it's, it'll come one day. Yeah, I mean, being in those studios, being around all those musicians and, you know, like looking at the process and looking at niggas right shit, Man. but then looking at niggas not free freestyling and changing the beat or just got the vocals and For then sure. changing the, putting the beat on around the vocal. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a whole different like type of process. Man. Like you got to appreciate that shit. And huh? it changed the way you approach it. You know what I mean? And part of why I did 365 too, because one time you told me like, you got to do this shit every day if you really want it. <sighs> And you know what I mean? It's like, damn, man, like, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's some real shit. Like, if you really want it, you got to do it every day. And that's really what anything you're doing. And if you're trying to be great at it or if you're trying to, like, like perfect your craft, you got to do that shit every day. Yeah, I mean, and that's what, and, and rapping is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. That shit costs <laughs> bread. Like, so when I was rapping, like, I was, I was like, I could do it. And I was like, nigga, this shit getting this. This studio session, boop, 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 boop. And the homie's like, no, nah, you can rap. I'm, you know. And, but that's and why I learned like, how to do my own shit. You know what I mean? That's why I picked up the production and the engineering. And I built, like, I got my own studio in my house. And, like, I, I would book sessions and watch engineers and ask questions. Because I'm like, yeah, that's how I'm going to get better at engineering. Because that's a whole separate craft in itself. So, like, yeah, you could rap. But then it's like, if you want to record yourself, that's a whole different skill set you got to... And you taught yourself how to do that shit. Yeah, that and just being in studios with dope engineers and asking questions. Damn, like, that's cold, though, because engineering itself, like, you got to get different. that shit right. And I, don't feel, I feel like engineers don't, like, get enough... Love. Yeah, they don't get enough love, because if you don't got them, you don't got nothing. Man. You like feel they'll me? They'll take some shit and make it sound like, damn. Yeah, because I know I was in there a couple times. I'm like, this ain't it. <laughs> and the, the engineer, mix. like, no, nah, I got, I got you. you. I got you. Yep. Then put some little shit on there, you know what I'm saying? And, for sure. and, and it get cracking, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, man, I'm glad you in here, man. I, again, I just wanted to shed some light on you. No, I appreciate and I wanted to it. shed some light on my people, man, because I feel like you're doing great things. Man, recording a song 365 days, I mean, a year, like, it's like, super great gotta be super talented Appreciate you know it. music definitely is quality you feel me and yeah man i i need i need everybody to tap in yeah, on my nigga you feel boy. me make sure you tap in on my boy so let let them know what you got coming let them know everything about you, you feel me so yeah, they can so, tap in uh west coast party dropping july 1st you feel me my new single um working on a project with the census working on a project also uh produced by myself coming this summer um yeah, man, follow me on all social platforms at the homie Drebo. Uh, Shopthehomies.com for the merch, you feel me? Don't forget your pack, you feel me? I oh, no, it's with, my, it's with my bag. Don't yeah, worry about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I appreciate you having me. Uh, hey, you know, it's crazy, too. Funny story. I've been watching you for a long time, so, like, you probably don't remember. I think I told you this before, too, but I was at your, uh, your all-white boat party. What? When I was, like, 16. <laughs> How the fuck you get in there? Yeah, exactly. Shout out my nigga Tiny. Shout out Floyd. You feel me? My was nigga you Max. He, you was there? Yeah, he was there. We was, a, 16? We was young in that motherfucker. Like, oh, we was doing Oh, nigga, up. I was turning up in that motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't even going to lie. That's a different T-Rail. I was like, I, like, I got to tell this nigga about that for sure. So oh, I, we I've been watching for a thirsty. long time. Thirsty. Yeah, we was yeah. thirsty. That's funny, girl. You yeah. was in that motherfucker. I was for sure in that motherfucker. Damn, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had video of that shit, bro. Oh, man. Nah, that shit was thirsty. good that there ain't no video of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, God. We probably a go down. <laughs>
<laughs> everything. Oh man, but yeah, man, I, it's, you know what I mean. So this full circle for me, you know what I mean, because yeah. I, I see I've been watching shit you doing, you know what I mean, been inspired by shit you doing. So I appreciate you having me up here for real. Hey, man, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the love, bro. For sure, for, for sure. Real. All right, y'all. That's it with my boy Drebo. We gone. Yeah.